Today we're going to study about heat capacity and specific heat. So let's say energy is added to a certain system, but there is no change in the kinetic or potential energy of that system, which means that the energy has been uh, converted or has been added to the internal energy of that system. So basically we can say that there is a rise in the temperature of that system, of, but there is an exception to this, to this rule. For example, if we have a phase change or a uh, phase transition, uh, there is no, no change in temperature even though we are adding energy in the form of either work or heat to a certain system. So today we're going to talk about only uh, about energy added to a system as a means of heat, but know also that energy can be added to a system uh, in different forms, for example, as work. So basically, uh, if we have a system that is consisted of a, of a certain substance, you'll notice that the temperature, that the energy needed to be added to that system to raise the to raise the temperature of the system by a certain amount varies from substance to substance. For example, uh, if you are talking about water, in order to raise the temperature of one of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, we need four thousand one hundred ninety-six joules. Now, if you want to raise the temperature of one kilogram of copper by one degree Celsius, then we will need only three hundred ninety-six. Uh, 387 joules. So what is heat capacity here? Now heat capacity is defined as the amount of energy needed in order to raise a, sa a sample of a, of a certain substance by one degree Celsius. So we can say that the heat needed to raise the temperature of that sample is equal to the heat capacity times the change in temperature. Now, what is specific heat? Specific heat is basically a heat capacity per unit mass. So, heat capacity, we can define that uh, for heat capacity, we're more talking about a certain system rather than a sample from a certain element. So the heat capacity is defined as the amount of energy needed to raise the, the, a certain mass or the mass of a certain substance by uh, 1 degree uh, Celsius. So this is basically the heat capacity times the mass times the change in temperature. Now, uh, if, the, if the heat capacity is bigger, that means that we need um, more and more energy in order to raise um, a certain amount of that, of, of that substance by a certain uh, temperature. For example, if we're talking about water, let's say we have 0 0.5 kilograms of water and we want to increase the temperature by 3 degrees celsius so basically the specific heat capacity 4886 joules per kilogram times um, degree celsius so we'll need uh, 6.28 times 10 to the power of 3 joules in order to raise the temperature by uh, 3 degrees celsius so Let's let's write that down. So for water, we have 0 0.5 kilograms of water. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,186 joules per kilogram times degree Celsius times 0 0.5 kilograms of water times 3 degrees Celsius, and we'll get. 6.28 times 10 to the power of 3 joules. Now notice here that since we're increasing the, the temperature, the temperature is positive and here the heat is positive. Now, which means that we're adding heat or we're adding energy to that system. 
Now, if the temperature was minus, meaning that we were decreasing the temperature, uh, that would mean that the water was losing energy and the result was losing heat. So this sign here would be a minus sign. Now, I want to talk about something else. Let's say we have a system, let's say potato, and we put that potato in a, a microwave. Now, the energy that will be added to that potato, we can say that the uh, basically the internal energy or the change in internal energy of the potato will be equal to the energy that will be added through electromagnetic waves and that will be equal to the mass of the potato times the specific heat times the change in temperature of that potato. So basically here we can say that the energy transfer to that potato in electromagnetic uh, radiation would be equal to if we were to raise the temperature of that potato by a certain amount. So this is energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation which would be equal to m times c times delta t. And the same can be said for example if we are pumping a tire. We're adding air to that tire, so basically the change, the change in internal energy would be equal to the work added since. Now here we are adding energy to the tire in the form of work, and that work would be equal to if that tire, if we're raising the temperature of that tire by a certain amount in degrees. Now the the specific heat also depends on the temperature, meaning that is not always constant. But in our cases, uh, since we will, we will be talking about small temperature changes, uh, that that will not affect the final solution uh, by much. So basically, the formula. For, for the specific heat would be m times the integral times the integral from the initial temperature till the final temperature but for example the specific the heat the specific heat would be would differ by one degree by one percent we were talking about a temperature of uh, 1 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius. So this will not affect us a lot. And let's say here that C, since we're, is a constant, then we can pull it in front of the integral sign. So you'll get this. And now we can write the integral as basically n times c and this will be equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature or mc times delta t. We'll talk about in integrals in future videos or maybe I'll do in a series on integrals but for now you have to the only thing that you have to remember is that the specific heat will is constant no matter the the temperature for for the problems that we're going to be solving. Now I want to say something interesting as a conclusion. Since we're talking about water and water has a very uh, high specific heat, the temperature around a huge bodies of water is always is always mild. And since water has a high uh, specific heat, uh, that means that uh, a lot of energy is needed to raise the temperature of water by a certain amount, but also a small decrease in the temperature of a large body of water also yields a lot of 
energy or a lot of heat and that heat is transferred to the uh, air and that's why the the air the, temp the air temperature stays mild for example on, in the US on the west coast the winds blow from from west to east and all the energy that's released from the water is heats up the air and also that warm air is blown towards the coast and that's not the case on the on the east coast where the winds blow from the west to the east away from from the coast and away from the land so that's it for today In the next video we're going to study about um, about uh, kilometers and how we can measure the uh, calories of substances.